Of course, uh, you can look for windfall. <coughs> and windfall is fantastic for fruits, uh, and sometimes for buds, and sometimes for all sorts of material, depending on how long you are after the, that's happened. So um, in the case of a specimen where there's really well-developed buds, but there are no fruits on the plant, you can go scouring around the base of the plant uh, looking for, and obviously you, you, you can find fruits, and you can find enough fruits to make up What's the biggest issue about doing that when it's not attached to the plant? Getting the wrong fruit. There, there's always the danger that you will collect the wrong thing. Now, in a case like this, that has woody fruits and this has woody fruits. But again, if you use your, if you can see something high up that you just can't reach, um, and you can get a good eye, eye on it, especially with a, a binoculars, then you've got a very good sense of that you can relate this to that. Okay, I can see, I can see the pointy bits on the fruits, so I can see the ribs on the fruit. Yes, it's about the same size and so on. If there are no fruits up there, and you've got three or four, see, I've got a eucalypt here as well as this one there. So again, if you're able to spot with the binoculars what the fruits are on this, you might be able to write it out of contention. So you need to be extremely careful one way or another that you've got the right, uh, the right uh, species. As soon as you collect windfall, you have to be very careful, okay? Nothing wrong with it as long as you're careful. So with something like this, I don't really need a pole pruner because I can... Uh, 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 I can actually grab uh, material uh, just with a, uh, if, if that was out of reach, I could use a stick or something to pull that down. So that's um, no, no trouble. Now just uh, uh, very uh, briefly, um, we'll look at this and a couple of other eucalypts so we can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, what we have here, is uh, one of the three eucalypts. Uh, the leaves are opposite and decussate. Uh, they're quite hairy, but that's uh, not always the case. Uh, the fruits... The fruits show you that, at least in some cases, uh, there are these more or less terminal, uh, terminal clusters. So, uh, of uh, fruits, uh, which were t uh, terminal inflorescences. If we look at the fruits, you can see uh, that, come around, come in close, you can see that there are persistent uh, uh, points on top of the fruits, and they're in fact the persistent sepals. And you can see the fruits are quite ridged. Now you have to be careful with this because some fruits of some eucalyptus can be ridged. Uh, usually they don't have these persistent tops. If you see this in flower, you'll actually see the sepals as green structures and you'll see white petals. So when we've got these ridges and these apices, these persistent sepals, the opposite to cusset leaves, and one other feature which I'll illustrate now which you can see, sort of, even on this plant. That's not just an artifact, but there are these branches that are really contorted. Now, you may not have noticed any of these on other species that we saw on the field trip out to New England look at. As, as you're going um, into Wollamombi uh, Falls, you'll see a whole cluster of trees. They're quite different from this, but the similarity is they've got quite a good canopy to them, but the branches are these contorted branches. So what genus do we have here out of Angophora carimbia eucalyptus, where there is actually a perianth, uh, the rib fruits, the opposite decusset leaves, and this contorted branching, it's Angophora. Okay, so that was a case where we really didn't need 
um, a coal pruner. We could have got away with it. But come around here. 